Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Keisha. Have you ever had that feeling when your skin is tight and it feels dry, and when you touch your skin, it still feels moisturized? Well, my friend, you have dehydrated skin, one of the many gifts that winter brings us. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about dehydrated skin, what it is, some of the symptoms, what causes it, and how to treat it. Let's get started. So what is dehydrated skin? As we've mentioned before, there are multiple skin types. Some people categorize them as three, some people categorize them as four. Basically dry, normal, oily, and combination, it's like kind of a condition but kind of a skin type as well. Dehydrated skin typically occurs in individuals who identify themselves as having oily or combination skin. Unlike dry skin where your sebaceous glands are unable to reduce enough sebum to keep your skin supple and retain moisture, dehydrated skin is your skin is lacking water essentially. The reason why this occurs in oily skin types is because let's say your skin is really dry, really dehydrated. Your oily sebaceous glands are going to start being hyperproactive, thinking that they're moisturizing your skin by producing more and more oil. But that only creates another occlusive layer and stops actual hydration from getting to your skin cells. When you touch your skin, it'll feel supple, it'll feel soft, it'll feel moisturized. When you actually start to move your facial muscles, you'll feel very dry and tight. The good news is that dehydrated skin is not a skin type and it's completely reversible if you know how to treat it. What are some of the symptoms? So I wrote them down. So first you'll feel, like I said, your skin is tight. It'll feel dry, not flaky, but tight and dry. It'll feel itchy. Sometimes you'll find that products that you've been using for a long time all of a sudden are stinging your face. Sometimes you'll feel a product burn on your face. Um, you'll feel it being really sensitive, overtly sensitive. Like you would rub your skin and it'd get red. You would, you know, li lightly scratch your nose. Everyone does that. And it would just leave a red patch and it would just be irritated and stingy all the time. Um, your skin will feel dull. The texture on your skin will not be even anymore. And you will see that fine lines on your face that typically when you use like a hyaluronic acid or some hydrating serum are plump now they'll just look very, very noticeable no matter what you do. Another thing you'll see that your makeup will not apply as smoothly on your skin anymore because there's patches, there's patches of uneven skin. So what are the causes of dehydrated skin? The number one biggest cause of dehydrated skin is your environment. Seasonal changes play a big role in your skin, and this is why it's super important to change up your routine every season. If you're someone who lives in North America like myself and you experience four seasons, it's really important to make sure that your routine changes as your environment changes, regardless of your skin type, because your skin type or the way that it expresses itself tends to change based on what's going on around you. Even more than that, in the summer, we're typically in um, air conditioned environments in the winter there's a lot of heat but having those environmental changes really does dry out your skin also currently we are wearing face masks for the better half of the day and if you're wearing cotton masks on your face or the disposable ones they tend to dry out a lot of moisture from the skin cotton absorbs moisture quick tip i would recommend getting either a lined face mask um, that's lined with satin or silk or getting um, just a regular actual satin sheet mask for your face. That's what I use. Anyways, the next thing would be over exfoliation. Yes, it is super important to exfoliate your skin because you wanna make sure that the dead skin gets off. We talked about this in acne prone skin, the previous video that we did, I'll link it up above, but it's really important to make sure that you're not over exfoliating your skin. Sometimes you get a little exfoliation happy because it gives you immediate results. After you exfoliate, your skin feels so beautiful and soft and everything applies better and everything absorbs better. But if you exfoliate too much, you can be causing yourself more and more irritation. And if you're using something that's too strong for you, that's even more a recipe for disaster. 
That leads me into the next contributing factor, which is using harsh acids. So anything that is acidic on your skin has a tendency to be irritating on your skin. We know that vitamin C, as much as it's an amazing ingredient, can be very irritating. Retinol as well, amazing, but hella irritating. BHAs as well are very drying, and if you're someone with acne prone skin, using too much of it can cause really unsufferable results and make your problem worse as well. The next is overwashing your face. Cleansing your skin is super important. It is the beginning of your skincare routine. I am a big advocate for double cleansing, especially if you're wearing makeup or you've been reapplying your SPF throughout the day, which you should, then you'll want to do a double cleanse. But be careful about what you're using to double cleanse with. The next is lack of water. If you are someone who drinks a lot of caffeine, which since I'm working from home, I've been, I've been good in that department. I don't drink too much coffee, but I do drink a lot of tea. Some of them do tend to be caffeinated by design. And if you drink a lot of alcohol, I'm a lover of wine. Um, so that's something that I drink on occasion. But if you're not taking the extra steps to replenish that moisture, because caffeine and alcohol are very, very drying. It's harsh on your body, but also very, very drying. You want to make sure that you're drinking enough water. I think people confuse water intake with drinking actual water every single day. It's not about that. You can get water from the foods you eat. You can get water from tea. You can get water from lemon in your water. Like there's so many things that you can do to up that water intake. Eating an unhealthy diet. So we talked about some of the uh, foods that have fruits and vegetables that have high water content, like um, cucumbers, like watermelons, those type of things already have water in them. But if you're not eating enough fruits and vegetables, you're missing and lacking those essential minerals. Your vitamins are the building blocks for your skin, for your overall health. You can't function without the necessary vitamins. So if you're not eating full, balanced, nutrient-rich foods, there's no way that your skin is going to thrive. Like, I hate to break it to you, but your body cares more about your internal organs than the way that your skin looks. Stress can also dry you out. The reason being is it increases cortisol, the hormone, the stress hormone. And when you are stressed, you start to sweat. Sweat is a releaser of water. That's how we release water. That's how we cool ourselves down. When you're releasing all of that, but you're not replenishing it, it is a recipe for disaster. So what can you do about your dehydrated skin? Here's a little advice. Number one, drink more water. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So next, avoid really hot and long showers. We all love the feeling of a warm, scorching hot shower. I'm just getting the sensations just thinking about it because I love it so much. The steam can really be drying out your skin. Heat does have that ability. So if you're somebody who likes steaming as well, it's not the place to do it, especially if you feel like your skin is getting really dry. That's not the way to go. That's why I'd always recommend also don't wash your face in the shower if you're going to be washing your hair. I love washing my face in the shower because it's super easy, especially when you're oil cleansing. But if I'm going to be washing my hair, I don't do that. You guys know that I recently started my hair care journey and, um, it's been really difficult, especially because I have what they call low porosity hair. Low porosity hair needs warm, really hot water to expand and draw moisture in. So I have to run really hot water on my hair and just make sure that that doesn't touch my face. So now when I'm washing my hair, I would typically put on a moisture mask when I go into the shower. So while I'm doing all that steam and all that good stuff, my skin has a moisture mask on, typically something like aloe vera, so it can still soak in all of that moisture in the air, but not allow the skin to dry out. The next thing I'd recommend doing is getting a humidifier. Really dry air is hard on your nose, it's hard on your eyes, it's hard on your skin. So getting that extra humid humidity in that air is really going to help keep some of that moisture in. I know that a lot of people like to spritz their face with a facial spray and that's nice and all and it will really help for that time being but the spritzing of the face can also have the reverse effect where it will start to dry out your skin because the water then dries on your face and it evaporates and 
you know, that pulls hydration out of your skin as well. So if you are someone who really does enjoy using facial sprays and you're going to be misting your face throughout the day, I'd recommend using something that has more lipids in it. This is going to at least have some sort of occlusive there or emollient there to ensure that the water doesn't evaporate from your face and take all the hydration with it. The next thing is really put hydrating products into your skincare routine. When your skin is dehydrated, you want to cut out those acids, you want to put them down, you want to be as gentle and hydrating as you possibly can be. So get your aloe vera, get your hyaluronic acid, things that have glycerin in it, things that have butylene glycol in it, anything that has that beautiful humectant. You can also use this time to treat your skin. If you haven't been doing as many moisture masks as you probably should be, then you probably should be. So this, like I said, the aloe vera mask or a honey mask, oatmeal masks are good as well. Even sheet masks are great and I tend to use those a lot more in the winter as well. Um, using something like that will just give you a little bit of pampering for your skin and prep it for your next step. Also, you can really make good use of your toner during this time. So you can use something called the seven layer toner method. I tried this in the I tried it video before, as well as um, the LA Beautyologist, The Golden Prescription here on YouTube. She did a video a while back talking about the way that she uses toner to get maximum hydration. So your routine essentially would be cleanse, toner, serum, toner, emulsion, toner, whatever your steps are, toner, then moisturizer, then so on and so forth. But your skin is always staying damp and this will really help to maximize the hydration and lock in the moisture in your skin. Now, I've personally never done that consistently, but maybe there'll be another I Tried It video coming up very soon. The last thing, you definitely want to make sure you exfoliate your skin. And I know that sounds counterproductive, but listen, your skin type doesn't go away just because you're experiencing a skin condition. So if you have oily skin, you're still going to want to exfoliate. Um, maybe not using a beta hydroxy acid, maybe switching for an AHA instead to get rid of some of the dead skin that's still on the skin, as well as using something more gentle. So something like mandelic acid, lactic acid. If your skin is really sensitive, maybe do an enzymatic using an enzyme as an exfoliator because it's a lot more gentle on your skin as well. And it's hydrating. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment down below and let me know what do you do for your dehydrated skin. Did you learn something new? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Click over here to see some of my previous videos. As always, stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, and I'll see you lovely ladies and gents in my next video. Bye!